Welcome to Past People. Today I will discuss the nightlife of the Parisian sex scene and how King Edward VII was an avid punter at the brothels. So much so that he had his own room and even designed his own sex chair that has puzzled the public ever since. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Paris was rampant for its own version of the red light district. The brothels were bustling with a steady stream of men from all walks of life. This seeded hobby was only banned in Paris in 1946. And before this, boozy fueled evenings with the women of the night was encouraged and a large part of normal Parisian society even earned in itself as one of the best in the world. Not all of the remnants of this lost time of scandalous sex has been removed and some areas of the Pigalle neighbourhood of Paris still cling to its past. It is here you will find peep shows, strip teasers and a nightlife filled with sexual innuendo entertainment. The sexual revolution that is still present in Pigalle may lead one to believe that all the brothels of the time were equally as low-key. However, there was one that was positioned in the centre of Paris. It was there that used to exist one of the best known and most luxurious brothels in the world. Le Chabonnet was the name of the renowned brothel that attracted some of the most influential and powerful men of the times from all across Europe between 1878 and 1946. Kings, lords and sometimes the old lady travelled long distances to whet their sexual appetites. Le Chabonnet was luxurious and it needed to be with the clientele that it attracted. It had 30 rooms of varying styles. Themes were a popular design choice with one each holding a different style such as Moorish and Ancient Roman. The notorious Dirty Berties, the future king of the UK, his favourite was the Hindu room. He frequented at Le Chabonnet often in the 1880s and he was one of their big ticket goers and he was the ultimate playboy prince of Wales. The difference with Prince Edward was he took his extracurricular activities seriously. He had a special and extraordinary contraption made just for his sexual needs. He commissioned a love seat that would be able to take his weight during lovemaking in the Parisian bordello. The chair was known as Siege de Amour, or Love Seat, and this chair allowed the noticeably large framed Bertie to have his way with not just one, but two women at the same time, all with minimum of effort. By the time he had become a middle-aged man, the prince was indulging in five enormous meals a day, consisting of up to 12 courses each mealtime. And this began to catch up with him, and he had become very large. This did not help him undertake his favourite hobby, and that was sleeping with many women all at once. It was this reason that he designed the love chair, as it could accommodate the prince and two companions without anybody being crushed. The chair has survived to this day. The chair is beautiful, ornate, but very confusing. It looks like a Victoria bobsled, covered in green silks and at once aerodynamic and unworldly looking. There are handles, headrests and footrests, but it is not in any immediate way clear who goes where. As the owner reported, the precise arrangement is open to debate. Since the chair's rediscovery, it has been exhibited around the world and has been subject of a documentary made by the Smithsonian. One of the historians said, What was really obvious for me is there was room on it for two ladies, one on the top and one underneath, but exactly how he got to the one underneath we never managed to actually work out. What was she doing down there? Was it like a queuing system? She was just lying down there to wait. But it's quite a contraption. It looks a bit like a sleigh. It's a weird looking thing, but apparently it worked and Bertie loved it. The precise physics of what went where will likely never be known, 
or hope springs eternal that some kind of intricate diagram will be unearthed behind a charge lounge. It seems that Edward took the specifics of his habit to the grave. The royal sex chair is a unique, intimate piece of history. Just think about how much more fun the whole thing would be if it didn't involve him being a cheating husband. This king was a progressive man with a very forward-thinking view on the world. His love seat is proof of this. He is responsible partly for bringing the British monarchy into the modern day we know today. And many of the things the royals do today, such as planting trees at inaugural ceremonies, greeting visiting dignitaries, undertaking overseas goodwill trips, were all introduced during Edward's reign. During a time of profound racism, Edward was known to be disgusted by the nature of treatment against those of other cultures. Bertie was the Prince of Wales for a long time, while his long-serving mother was still Queen, and this left him with little direction for many years. His mother also forbid him of having involvement in the Crown at all, due to her embarrassment of him, so it is no surprise that he went a little wayward along the way. His attention turned to other ventures while he waited for the Crown, causing further disgruntlement and disappointment to his parents. Another of Bertie's controversial antics of his favourite brothel was to fill a swan-necked bathtub with champagne while entertaining the women of the night. What was the point in being absurdly wealthy if he didn't spend it indulging with those that he desired the most in life? And Bertie had an addictive personality and he consumed things with great greed. Not only was he addicted to women, he was also an avid drinker, gambler and eater. His reputation gave him the nickname Edward the Caresser and Dirty Bertie among the public and his contemporaries. His mistresses were never far from his mind and when he became king at the ripe age of 59, he was still not over his controversial indulgences. Even so, that he set aside a special box for his mistresses during his coronation. Women had become his passion at a young age when he was sent away to serve in the army at only 19. His parents had shipped him off in the hope to curb his wildly behaviours, but if anything, it only kick-started the most wild of addictions in him. When he arrived, his fellow army officers arranged for an actress named Nellie Clifton to be smuggled into his quarters. The news travelled fast back to his parents, who were far from approving of his latest antics. Prince Albert despairingly wrote to him, I knew that you were thoughtless and weak, but I cannot think you depraved. Not long after his father took a trip to convince him to end his affair with the actress, his father was dead. Although it was suspected he had died from typhoid fever, his mother was beside herself with anger and grief and blamed his death on her son, Edward. With the weight of the blame of his father's death on his shoulders, he took to even more unruly behaviours partying all night and frequenting with an ever-increasing number of women. He was a regular face at racy venues such as Café de Anglaise, the Moulin Rouge and, of course, Le Chavonnet. Amongst all this, he had a wife at home and a large brood of children. His beautiful wife, Alexandra of Denmark, is said to have tolerated his behaviour, but then what other choice did she have? One of his mistresses whom he is said to have loved was that of Daisy Warwick, a beautiful socialite known for throwing fabulous tea parties at her mansion in Essex. She was known for providing the perfect place for men to commit adultery. The tea would be served by women wearing tea gowns, which were loosely fastened at the waist. The men come back from their sporting events to women without corsets on, to allow for ease of passage and the guests would then pair up and retire to their rooms for their assignments. Edward died after a short reign, and even one of his mistresses caused a scene on his deathbed, when his long, patient wife had finally had enough of them. She had his last mistress forcibly removed from his deathbed and home before she could say goodbye to him.
Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.